Thanks for coming back, everyone. We're going to talk briefly about four groups or families on the periodic table, um, just to highlight some of their properties, to highlight um, really how exciting they are as groups and to show that they're very similar. For almost all of these groups, I would suggest going to YouTube and um, and looking up demonstration videos that uh, that feature these elements because they are much more exciting than any lecture that I can give you. Uh, we're gonna talk about two metal groups to start with, the first of which is group one on the periodic table. So it's literally the first column on the left-hand side of the periodic table. And those elements are called the alkali metals, uh, the most reactive group of metals on the periodic table. Hydrogen is at the top of that group, but is usually not included in the list of alkali metals. So if I go back, um, the metals that we're talking about are lithium and sodium and potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Many of these elements you've heard of, um, almost certainly you've heard of sodium and potassium, but we're so much more familiar with the compounds that they form than the elements themselves that I find students are often really surprised by the true nature of some of these elements. So for instance, when we think about sodium, we think of sodium chloride and we put it on food and french fries, things like that. Um, but the truth of sodium, the element, is that it's a metal. It's shiny like other metals. It's a really soft metal. Um, it is a very corrosive metal. If you were to pick it up, you would feel it. It would, it would hurt as it, it kind of ate away um, at your skin. Um, it's a very reactive metal. If you put it into water, it will catch on fire and potentially explode in the water. Same thing for potassium. We think of compounds in bananas that contain potassium. It's a great source for potassium, but not elemental potassium. Potassium is also a shiny metal. It's also very soft. It also has um, extreme kind of corrosive properties. It also will react violently with water. And that's something that, you, like I said, you should look up a video of the alkali metals in water because they're spectacular reactions. But I think one of the biggest things that we should take away from this is, you know, sodium and potassium are very similar uh, to one another. And we would find if we saw lithium or rubidium or cesium, they also are very similar. Soft metals, shiny metals, corrosive metals, metals that react violently with water. Francium might be the one exception just because it's a radioactive element and there's just not much of it on the planet. I think there at any one given time, there's about a gram of francium on earth spread out over the entire earth. So you're not gonna get your hands on any of that. But for the other elements, they all behave and react in similar ways. Um, one, one thing that we should note is just to say that they're similar doesn't mean they're the same. So for instance, if you watch a video where you see lithium react with water, it actually reacts, but at a much kind of calmer uh, way than something like cesium uh, down here, which reacts very quickly and very violently with water. In fact, that's a good thing to put in your notes is that reactivity for metals tends to increase as we go down the chart. If I look to the right of the alkali metals on the periodic table, I run into the alkaline earth metals. These are still very exciting uh, elements, but, but much uh, I think much more tame than the alkali metals that we saw in the first column. This is group two on the periodic table. Um, and the earth metals are much less corrosive. So for instance, in the lab, we picked up pieces of, of magnesium. Um, we would never do that with something like sodium. When we burned magnesium, we saw that it is still very reactive, but it's not so reactive that you can't uh, actually touch it. And so in general, the properties of the alkaline earth metals are just a little bit 
lesser than what we see with the alkali metals. They tend to be a little bit harder. They tend to be a little bit less reactive. Um, they uh, are just in every way a little bit less exciting in some ways than the alkali metals. They do burn brightly and with uh, really exciting colors. And so typically you'll see um, some of these alkaline earth metals in, in fireworks and things of that nature because of the colors that they produce when they burn. On the very opposite side of the periodic table, you run into non-metal uh, non columns. Probably the most reactive of all the non-metals are the halogens. The halogens are group 17, second to last column on the periodic table. And one of the things that's special about the halogens as a group of non-metals is that you see actually every phase within this one column. I think it's the only place on the periodic table where that's true. So you have a couple of gases, you have a liquid, you have a solid. This is actually AT is radioactive, so we don't talk about it as much. Um, but we have uh, also elements that are react in similar ways um, and have some properties that are similar as well. The reactivity of nonmetals typically is the opposite of what we see for metals. So for metals, they got re more reactive as we went down the chart. For nonmetals, they tend to get more reactive as we go up the chart. And uh, to put that in perspective, like HCl is something we used in the lab the other day. It's called hydrochloric acid. It contains chlorine. And while that can be uh, a chemical that we need to be very cautious with, and it can um, do some damage if you get it on you, it's no nowhere near um, the reactivity of the element just above it. This is called hydrofluoric acid. This is probably something that we would never use in a, in a laboratory, uh, especially at a high school level, just because of how dangerous it is as a substance. It's very reactive and can be very dangerous to tissue. So if you get it on you, um, it, it's not a good thing for sure. As I go one column to the right of the halogens, what I find is a lot less reactivity. Group 18 on the periodic table, those are the noble gases, and the noble gases are um, much, much, much less reactive than the and than any column on the periodic table. Um, in fact, most of these elements don't react at all. It's just a, a couple of them towards the bottom, like krypton and xenon, that might react to form a very few uh, compounds. But otherwise, these, these elements are what we call inert. They don't react. And, um, and that's because, as we'll learn as we proceed further, that they, uh, they tend to have what we call uh, full electron shells. They have as many electrons as they um, could want or need. They uh, don't need to lose electrons. They don't need to gain electrons. So there's really no impetus for them for, uh, to react. So we know of, you know, neon lights, uh, you see... Uh, noble gases, when they uh, you run an electric current through them, uh, they will shine brightly in pretty beautiful colors. Uh, we know about helium balloons, and um, they have some very important kind of industrial um, uses because they're so unreactive. Um, but their their chemistry um, isn't all that complex because they don't react very often. Okay, we're going to leave it at that. We will see you very soon.